For so many bow hunters, there's this mythical connection within the experience of chasing wild animals in wild places. With that connection comes frequent thoughts of adventures and what it must have been like for early archery pioneers and woodsmen. That connection is derived from one soul, one man, who many consider to be the godfather of modern archery. Born in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania on March 5, 1902, Fred Bear was the second of three children. One would think with all the famous Fred Bear hunting folk tales and legends that he must have popped out of the womb with a stick and string in hand. However, that wasn't the case. In fact, Fred Bear did not even pick up a bow until he was nearly 30 years old. Well, uh, you see, I began earlier in 1933. And uh, the bow hunters then, you could count on your fingers and toes in Michigan. And, uh, but uh, I grew up as a gun hunter. My dad was a hunter. And I shot a deer in 1933 up in the Upper Peninsula. It dressed 285 pounds, biggest deer I ever saw. And it was so easy. Uh, opening morning, I walked up the draw, and there he was looking at me, and I looked at him, and I shot him and went down. And that's when the work began. Yeah. 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 So I thought this would be a little bit better, and just a good sporting way. Early on in Fred's life, he worked as a glue maker slash printer for the Chrysler Company in Detroit, Michigan. As a plant manager, Fred found himself out of work after a building fire left the operation in ashes sometime during the Great Depression. Through that adversity, the Bear Products Company was founded. In 1933, Fred and a former co-worker, Charles Piper, threw together 1200 bucks and the company was off to the races, operating out of Fred's garage. But the initial focus of the company wasn't archery. It was silk screening for the advertising of the auto industry. The, uh, my interest in going into business was not really in the field that we were in, inter that we were in tire covers and silk screen work. I was interested in the bow, so uh, I, I hired a, a bow maker by the name of Nell Scrumley, who had a reputation in the area for making and uh, whittling out fine bows. And he was a fine artist and did a beautiful job. I hired him, and this archery thing was just a little infant uh, that was off in the corner, kind of being uh, subsidized by the business we were doing with uh, in a regular field. In 1947, Fred Bear moved his wife to Grayling, Michigan, where they lived out of a tent along a river in efforts to keep their personal expenses down to make a go at their archery business. The business struggles continued for Fred well over the next decade, at least until more states permitted bow hunting and the sport began to grow. So where did Fred's love of archery come from? Well, it was inspired by a meeting of Art Young in the 1920s and Art's film, Adventures in Alaska. At that point, Fred became infatuated with the sport of archery. Yes, and you can learn more about hunting deer with a bow and arrow uh, in a week than a, a gun hunter might <laughs> learn all his life. Fred's obsession for archery quickly turned his personal shooting efforts into some tangible accomplishments as he began winning archery tournaments that included Michigan's Target Archery State Championships in 1934, 1937, and 1939. Beyond target archery, Fred also helped create Michigan's very first bow hunting season in 1937, which also prompted so many other states to follow suit. In 1942, Fred's very first cinematic project would break ground as he became the very first Michigan bow hunter to ever harvest a whitetail on film. That film project was just the beginning of Fred's adventures. He continued his bow hunting film pursuits around the world as he displayed his woodsmanship and archery skills on elusive big game species, which include the Alaskan brown bear, caribou, moose, stone sheep, the Bengal tiger, African lions, a four-ton elephant, which was shot at 40 yards, a Cape buffalo, and even a polar bear. 
Fred's adventures were critical in growing the sport of archery hunting throughout the years, leaving a long-lasting impact and legacy on the hunting community. Not only were his filmed adventures entertaining, but they were also educational by design. As you can see, Fred's personal bow hunting accomplishments are astounding, and we haven't even gotten into the impact of the Bear Archery Company. As a true pioneer in the archery world, Fred earned patents on tools like the Razorhead Broadhead, the Modern Shooting Glove, fiberglass bow backings, the quiver, and so many more archery tools used around the world. With the nostalgia around Fred Bear, one would think Bear Archery was one of the first compound bow makers in the world. But that wasn't the case. Fred's focus was on recurve and longbows. In fact, it took years for Bear Archery to find success in the compound world with their model, the Whitetail Hunter. While Bear Archery has changed hands several times throughout the years, they still to this day manufacture high quality bows at every price category imaginable and doing so while carrying Fred's cornerstone business philosophies of keeping customers first priority and passing along Fred Bear's 10 commandments. Number one, don't step on anything you can step over. Number two, don't look for deer, look for movement. Number three, always approach downwind. In the cool of the day, move uphill. In the heat of the day, move downhill. Number four, the best camouflage pattern is called sit down and be quiet. Your grandpa hunted deer in a red plaid coat. Think about that for a second. Number five, take only the gear to the field that allows you to hunt longer, harder, and smarter. Number six, a rainstorm isn't a reason to quit the hunt. It's a reason to stay. Number seven, camouflage your appearance, your sound, and your scent. Number eight, be sure of your shot. Nothing is more expensive than regret. Number nine, hunt where the deer actually are, not where you'd imagine them to be. Number 10, next year's hunt begins the minute this season's hunt ends. At the age of 86, Fred Bear passed away in 1988, but his legacy and impacts on the bow hunting world will live on forever. While we all should appreciate his efforts, personality, and accomplishments, the modern day bow hunter will never likely fathom where we would be without the life work of Fred Bear. <laughs>